Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to my channel, where I like to make audio narrations of stories from across the internet. In this series, we'll be focusing on a web novel called There Is No Epic Lucha, Only Puns, from the website Royal Road. And in this video, we'll be doing chapters 79 to 81. I hope that you enjoy. There Is No Epic Lucha, Only Puns, chapter 79. Delta's Dungeon Defense When faced with an army of giant mutant spiders, Delta's mind wanted to find a nice safe place to close her eyes and wait for them to go away. But she pushed that feeling down as she watched Rennie and Missy take down several spiders without fear. Delta wanted to run and scream, but not now. Not while her monsters were doing their best. Still, she kinda wished that she had the powers to at least throw rocks at them. Wilhelm smashed a few more in a wild frenzy. Wherever this ape had been before had given it resilience to fear, and it didn't even blink as the spiders leapt for its thick hands. Remembering how she burned the slimers, she tried to summon a menu to install a gate of some form of fire. Raising monsters in the past life via handheld games had taught her that when little kids and brats charged at you with bugs, you had to burn them all. The only issue was the strange purple miasma that was flowing into her dungeon through the spider tunnel. The menu flickered into existence, but it was heavily distorted as she tried to focus on the room to seal the tunnel. Monster domain is leeching ambient mana. Structure formation is not possible within the miasma field. Use existing stable mana constructs to establish your own field. Stable what? The information box twitched as the flood of blue took over news as it took its place. Assuming direct control. Sheesh, these things are so useful as two left shoes of emergencies. Delta, use your monsters to beat the crap out of the vermin and take the tunnel. Delta grinned, nodding as she understood that just fine. The lone room was just the flow of spiders suddenly slowed and Delta had a slight spark of hope that maybe they had run out of little nightmares when her tooth began to ache as if a cavity was forming in record time. The tunnel beyond cracked open wider as a spider pulled itself through. It was the first wave where the giant spiders were then a thing was a titan spider. It loomed over the black mass of spiders when it walked. It even crushed a few of its own allies to reach the circus room. As it came closer, Delta felt a vile pressure grow again. It was like this giant beast was more important than the common spiders. It must be an elite. I don't think the mime or the little miss is going to cut it here. Delta urged everyone onto the open space outside of the tent and the titan spider rampaged forward, eager to sink those massive fangs into flesh. Odd, given the only creature not made of mana was Renemy, and he had been a mummy for not too long ago. As the first three legs appeared from the opening near the tent, Wilhelm leapt up and landed on top of the tent, the insides buckling and the wood groaned. Delta was glad that she had repaired the damn thing before this all happened. The giant silver ape reached down and yanked the titan upwards, the beast hissing loud enough to make Delta's skin prickle. The titan was quick to recover, turning to wrestle Wilhelm atop the tent. The spider was slightly bigger but Wilhelm had the power and leverage as he managed to snap one leg and use it as a makeshift spear. Where's Godzilla when you need him? Delta screamed as the tent entrance exploded with waves of black legs and fangs. She turned to see Missy being carried out by Rennie and the little mushroom spiring beams over his shoulder. Delta was quick on her heels. The spider legs passed through her avatar, and it felt like her body was being filled with hot acid. The sheer contact of the spider made Delta gasp and falter in her flight. Her stomach churned, and it was hard to breathe. She kept moving, being buried under a wave that was not going to happen. She turned to see the titan spider being thrown hard into the rock wall and Wilhelm swinging the stolen leg to crush the waves of spiders climbing up to aid the commander. Thankfully, he was part of the circus and if anything happened, she could bring him back. But by the looks of it, he wasn't going down without a fight. Remy was slowed down as he carried the slow Missy away from the hordes of spiders. They seemed to get more excited as they finally entered the main section of the floor, sucking the air madly and the sound made Delta ill. The small spiders moved quicker than the rest and the tip of the two legs ended up sharp bobs as it leapt at Rennie's back as Missy aimed the mess of the invasion. Rennie! 
She yelled and the mime turned and hefted his free arm up as if lifting something. Delta winced as the leaping spider seemed to impale itself on an invisible spear. It began sliding down slightly before Rennie dropped his construct. He put Missy down and gestured to the thick trees implying that the young mushroom should take cover. Missy shook her head, grabbing Rennie's hand, urging him to follow. Delta could feel what was not spoken, and she wished she could hide them all away. But the monsters gave no time for her feelings to magically make things better. Rennie pushed Missy behind him, and his normal ghoul smile turned feral, and scary as he snapped his fingers for Missy to run. The faster spiders that Delta had chosen to name assassin spiders, as their leaping and barbed feet gave her the impression that they weren't exactly trying to give Rennie a hug, leapt, and Rennie's hand was bound flat, causing them to crash into a flat wall. The five or so assassins quickly scuttled sideways, trying to find the ledge. It was then that Delta saw that Rennie had already figured out. Missy's eyes were flickering as if she was struggling to keep up with the lasers for such a long period of time. Missy, go! Delta ordered, and the mushroom child didn't seem to get the option as she was lifted off of her feet and carried into the forest by the tiny forms of the pygmies. They had taken Delta's order as intended. Rennie snapped his head to the far side as he helped both hands up and pushed against the wave of spiders. One assassin spiders had found that the end of the mime's wall and eagerly leapt to try at Missy and the unaware pygmies. Missy! Delta rushed forward, her form rushing through the spider midair. She flew through it and she expected her body, but it just moved. The full contact of the monster made Delta's inside shriek in burning pain as her avatar's body crashed onto the floor. She blinked in confusion as the spider also seemed to veer of course. It curled up and rocked in pain. What did she do? That? The pygmy forces were almost in dense collection of trees, while Remy's wall trembled under the fury of the giant spiders. However, Remy used his powers to snag two more assassin spiders, and the last two spiders leapt for Missy as if sensing an easier meal than Remy. Delta tried to move, maybe crash into them again, but her body burned. In her head, that watcher, that controller of this army was also in pain. The feeling transmitted through the mysma and the spiders themselves. The two spiders bared their fangs and swung their barbed limbs at Missy as the young mushroom tried to power her laser on a hurry, but the energy was sluggish to rise. Delta began to crawl forward, desperate to do something. She didn't want to see Missy hurt. She couldn't just sit here and do nothing. Delta needed help. She needed help. The trees parted and the two spiders had a split second to see their doom raise its fists above its head and swing them down with their hands. The jungle was quiet for an entire three seconds as everyone took stock of the newcomer. Dalton managed to shake his smile as the sight of Lord Mushy, Lordy, shake his fists and green guts before he reached down and grabbed his scepter like cane. The pygmies and Missy had frozen in awe of the sheer size of Lordy. I dare say, what fell guests dare to invite themselves to their end? He called and all around him mushrooms began to sprout, their caps beginning to buzz. No kidding, who invited these chumps to the party? Just looking at them is getting my groove, Maestro said with disinterest. Rennie leapt back and he was war was foul, but the giant spiders didn't rush, not yet. They eyed Lord Mushy with hate-filled eyes. Missy carefully stood up and bowed her little cap to Lordy, and the mushrooms carrying Maestro's voice. Do not fear, for I am here, Lordy promised as he took a few steps forward. His crowned head bent slightly as if glaring at the army before him with displeasure. How dare you hurt my mother and sister? His voice boomed and the cane in his hand seemed less decorative and more like a dangerous weapon. Maestro's own tone toned heavy with a promise. Please, let me know what requests you want for your final dance. The singer urged. There was a movement as two forms appeared on Lordy's crown. Delta blinked as the tiny forms of the priest and fungomancer. The fungomancer seemed to beckon at something, and all in a neat row, starlight mushrooms burst out of the ground on little feet. The priest chanted, as all the mushrooms, including Lordy, began to glow a soft orange. Lordy clenched one fist as if feeling the blessing take hold. Below, the starlight mushrooms took aim and began to fire tiny lasers into the crowd. 
the speed much faster due to the blessing. That was enough to get the spiders moving as they started forward again. Have at you, you gutless worms, Lordy yelled and rushed forward. His crown and cape flowed with heavy yellow spores. He spun and the spores flew out, making most of the spiders falter and even causing the closest ones to spasm to the ground as his cane began to crush heads and legs. Black mushrooms appeared on the spiders as the fungal monster's power and they ruptured violently in a cloud of spores and spider legs. Maestro cackled as his mushrooms began to let loose with their horns of war. You guys! She finally stood, and while the sight of her monsters defending her home was amazing, it was hard to feel confident when they were still outnumbered. That thought was washed away along with many spiders as Rail came exploding out of the river. He did not come alone. He rode Bob into the chaos. Bob takes offense to the worm comment. He roared as Bob swept his head wildly from the water. Rail leapt off his head, and Lordy smashed two spiders together. My apologies, I shall instead refer to these cretins as honorless thugs. Lordy promised. Rail's muscles bulged as he began to grab assassin spiders out of the air and use shield against the thick acid being fired at him by the green glowing spiders in the back. His trident being thrown at another incoming one. Tch! I'm a man so for close combat. Perhaps I can get some support. He called to the thick leaves. A shadow rushed to form on top, using jumping assassins as a springboard, bending thin needles down on the range spitters. The thin metal needles made them into pincushions as Luna landed near the back, her high heels buried deep into the body of one of the spitters. The epic ninja of the Blood Moon Arts is here, she yelled as she twirled onto another spider, heels acting like daggers as she crushed the cartwheel death into the back row. Don't get surrounded. Delta warned as the still coming giant spiders tried to do exactly that to her. Luna scoffed as she stood and there encircled. You think that I don't have a plan? She informed them as the shadows of the trees, glowing green spirits began to race towards the unaware spiders who only had eyes for Luna. Divina walked forward, her eyes glowing with the power of her spirits entered the spiders' bodies and began to cause their legs to act or even just a few, just lash out at those around them. Ninja, escape. Luna yelled cheerfully, back over the possessed spiders, as the witch doctor continued her efforts to make the spiders turn on one another. Rail swung again. The river seemed to surge at his command, but he was little overrun as he was bitten several times. Still, his bulging body fought on despite his veins turning dark. He was aided by a giant who wandered in and began to swing a tree that he'd pulled out of the ground, the great log creating a space for Rail to catch his breath. Lordy was stunning as he went, but the spitters were beginning to spread out the acid over the area and it was slowing the noble mushroom down. That was until Rennie landed on his shoulder, holding what Delta had to see was an umbrella, the acid sliding down to the side. Lordy laughed with joy as he felt the pain fade. The priest and Pongomancer came out of hiding and got back to work. The whole scene was chaos and death. Still, something was missing. Something. It hit her then that there was one little critter missing from the trio of her pygmies. The answer also came by sounds of furious buzzing and the faint tones of flight of the Valkyrie started up. The air support had finally arrived. The sky above went dark as the first waves of drone bees arrived. But in the lead was the tinker. He rode on the spearhead of the swarm. He raised one hand and he snatched it down. The bees swerved all over the oncoming black wave and dropped bundles of gutrot mushrooms. The sheer speed and impact caused them to rain death down upon the encroaching army. Dalta cheered and whooped as it all came together. They blasted scattered the main lot of more than a few scampered into the deep trees and rushed off in several directions. The spider controller, the queen, was learning and taking measures. The purple fog flowed out of the circus was very thick, but Delta could see a wave of blue and orange pushing it back. In the middle was new screen as he seemed to be giving off an aura. His entire focus was on it and Delta couldn't seem to reach him. She looked up as the warrior bees dived, stingers thicker than daggers at the spiders, but they were learning and headed to the trees to avoid open areas like the circus entrance. 
Rayel was looking ill, but he was surrounded by spiders' corpses. Luna and Davina had to retreat as some spiders with armored bodies with stinging tails forced Luna back since her needles and pointed heels couldn't as easily pierce their skin. Delta hoped that they would be okay, but she had to see where the spiders were going. The Queen and the Vemaisma also seemed to be helping her monsters push back the green energies of Davina. A few headed towards the core, but worse, more than enough went towards the stairs leading to the first floor. Nalta would not let these things reach her entrance. The Scarlet Moons would be back anytime soon, anyone else. Durants couldn't handle themselves with these new adventures. Delta wasn't going to take the risk that even more people might arrive. She flew off into the air. Defend our home. She called, hoping what a little encouragement she could offer was enough. To arms, Lordy responded. His form blurred even faster. Rail roared, charging and grabbing the scorpion spider that was about to sting Davina. You are not worthy to touch Lady Davina, he said furiously and ripped the tail off. Bob vanished into the water, and he was followed by some spiders upstream. Delta raced from the battlefield and hoped New could handle this from here. She had spiders to hunt. It wasn't a dungeon. New knew that, like how he knew Delta was hopeless, just a fact. There was just something not quite as complex as a dungeon in the flow of power. Corrupted mana. Unlike almost pure mana Delta leaked from her entrances, this mana had been so twisted by the Queen, for lack of a better title, that her normal eye, it would look like a sickly purple haze. But to Nu, who saw things in the basic of the dungeon existence, it was a spider. It was very mana had been forced into the same existence as the spiders. It was good for them. It only worked for them, and only other tainted field would be weakened, struggling to use their powers effectively. Interesting idea, really. If a dungeon did the same, then it would be better to fend, but it would also easily lose its main source of income. That's why Nu just couldn't respect such a thing. It was selfish to the point of suicide. Did the queen think that she could control the world? Without mana to others, food would be scarce. Life would just be spiders, and problems would arise. Honestly, ecosystems were there for a purpose. Nu had half a mind to rant at this queen, if not for the fact that he was doing his best to act as a band-aid to her flavor of trouble. Nu knew that this was another dungeon. Things would be rough or even worse. But this, he could handle this. Hunger, manner, give it to me, give, give. It was pure intent and manner that sounded the queen's desire. Nu responded in kind. Stop having so many kids and lose a few pounds. Your manner is heavier than bacon filled with gunshot, he challenged. The miasma twinged in anger, and the focus the queen was trying to give to the battle was diverted to Nu. That's right, split your attention, you dumb idiot. Nu felt twisted manner lash out at him. He felt his box crack a little under the pressure. The joys of not being in the dungeon core meant that in the events like this, his powers was a little less effective. Sss, can you hardly lend me a hand? He called. Her response was uncharacteristically sharp. Busy, containment in place, diverting corruption. Nu shook himself and began to just throw random pieces of Delta's puns at the purple manor. Puns that he had stored outside of his memory to preserve his sanity. The Spider Queen paused. It seemed to struggle to digest the information for a second before it bristled and grew furious beyond belief at the jokes. The strict control that she shook slightly, and the ranks of the spiders began to become confused. Nu tried to think about what Delta would say in this instance. You've been watching us for a while, trying to figure out the best way to eat us. I guess you really are a spy, duh. He tried, and the pun hurt him somewhere deep inside. The queen went absolutely silent, and her manner even froze. Then she began to scream in utter rage. And I thought I couldn't take a joke. Nu mumbled as the pressure grew, and his scream cracked harder. The scattered forces of the spiders went in so many different directions. Most went straight for the stairs, crossing Giant's Bridge in a frenzied rush to find more food. They climbed and climbed until they burst into a room where a solid ground turned soft and sandy. The eight spiders all felt the very air begin to crush down on them. 
The queen, the mother queen, her touch seemed so far away. They moved forward, agitated. They could smell pig. Juicy pig. The leader, one of the closest to evolution, neared the hole that smelled of chewy goblin and pig. Food, so close. The leader went still for a long metal object, went through its mouth, and the juicy pig walked out of the entrance, and seven left felt fear. The goblin was just supposed to be a prey, stared down upon at them. You think you can walk into my house and act like your kings? The goblin spat, and he flicked his weapon and the spider on it, fell backwards and smacked against the wall. It's time that you runs learned the pecking order. The goblin growled, and the juicy pig licked its lips. They felt fear, and they wanted their mother. A lone spider rushed about in a panic as if its fellow warriors had gone missing. The dense trees hanging the vines hid death. It reached small clearing and hissed at everything. Where, where? It turned fast with its legs lettered. It should weave a web to create defenses. It shot a single spool of white thread and it touched a branch. Spears and rocks hurled itself at the web, tangling it before it could do anything. The death shadows were here. The spider bared its fangs in a show of power, and something came crashing through the trees. It almost leapt by the sheer instincts, but it stopped when it saw there was one of its fellow spiders. Its legs had been hogtied, and a dozen little fluffy things covered its body. The fluffy things shouldn't scare it, but they did. It turned to run and found the trees all around it filled with little wooden faces. It froze, and it tried to spot a way out. The fluffy things were brown and the little wooden tubes on his left felt numb. Then it was being carried off into the darkness. The shadows of death had captured it. It prayed to the mother for a swift end. The scene on clean water as the pure manor drove a squad of assassin spiders to scale the wall to a hidden place. They grew excited. Hidden places must hide the source of manor. The queen had told them to find the source. The room beyond was mostly filled with water and a single road and two statues. The lead spider scuttled forward as the rest scaled the walls for ambushes. The only thing in this room was a small, tiny frog. Unlike the two large ones or the small, fast ones, this one looked old and frail. Easy prey. The leader moved forward, drooling as it readied to enjoy a quick snack of manna. The old frog looked up and the leader paused, as the feeling this thing gave off was not fear, but annoyance? That wasn't right. It felt the words spun and lightly exploded behind his eight eyes. Confusion, it shrieked for help and tried to climb to its feet, but the old frog had cast off its cloak to reveal powerful muscles and glowing tattoos. May Mother Delta have mercy on you, because this old man has had enough of you youngsters and your damned invasion games, the frog said with a deep growl. He bent on his legs filled with power. Before it could be understood, two of his brothers were smears on the wall. It turned to web or maybe to bite the frog, but the webbed foot smashed down on its head and it could only briefly feel surprised before its life ended. Gramps walked forward at the last spider. You're hurting my family. For that, I'm going to have to destroy you. They annoy me and they're too loud, but I love my fellow frogs. He sighed and then he eyed the spider as it tried to flee. Good thing that they aren't going to be told that, because you are going to live to tell them. And I would rather eat Mother Delta's mushrooms than admit it. He promised and dashed forward, cracking the stone beneath his feet as he grabbed the spider by the back leg and slammed it into the side of the entrance. Soon he was left holding only a leg and he checked it in the jungle below. He stared out at the jungle's battles raged on. Rail, you idiot. He said quietly and took off into the trees with an agility that didn't belong to such an old-looking man. Delta nodded as Fran made skewers of the spiders, turning her attention to the largest group of invaders away from the main force. About fifteen spiders were rushing towards her core, and Delta couldn't help but feel worried as the idea of those spiders touching her core filled her mind. One shot off flying across the room to see them squeezing into the door. Why wasn't it shut? She phased through the tree wall and the air inside the bathroom was uh, chilling. She watched as the spiders marched forward through the mists. She felt William's excitement. 
tangible, as if the mist itself was a mood ring, turning pink, then red, the longer the spiders took to search the room. The tree in the center unfurled her branches like a bird, and she looked up with Delta with a smile. Let my love for you be clear, she sang. Her soft, willowy branches flexed and became whips of thorns as others pierced the spiders like javelins. Delta watched as Wyam tore the spiders apart, her glee and joy growing brighter as the mist grew redder. It took no time at all, and while the spiders tried to harm Wyam, her tree bark was strong and she easily brushed them off with a shake of her body. Delta could see that she was playing with them, taking her time to end this. Stop it. The words were out of her mouth before Delta even knew it. Wyam merely hummed. I'm just doing my task. The tree was almost purred as she slowly pierced another spider. Delta felt the pain of invasion, the effort of her monsters were putting into defending her. And watching Wyam invite the danger in toy with it made Delta bristle. Enough, she snapped as Wyam froze. I, she trailed off as she looked at Delta's angry face. This is no time for this. You want to play games? Do it on your own time. My family is doing their best there. I don't know you, not yet, but if you don't respect their efforts and to at least take this seriously, then I won't stand for it. Do your job or I'll find someone who will. Delta said quietly, Wyam looked if she'd been slapped. The last war spiders exploded with gore and Wyam's face looked sunned. Happy, oh mistress, she bit out. Delta shook her head. Not until this is over. Just give me time and we'll talk. But now... She winced as she felt new struggle. Easy, don't force yourself. Despite your feelings, I do care. Go and worry. I shall keep the door locked and your call safe. I gave you my word. My word, the tree said with a sudden heat. Delta hesitated before she nodded. She flew straight for new. Wyam watched as the orange blur vanished. She felt angry, ashamed. Of course, showing off now would be a stupid thing to do. Wyam cursed herself and snatched the dead spider to pieces in frustration. Mother was going to talk, someone else to do her job. Wyam felt her very branches curl at the idea. This was her task, her existence. The door before her locked tightly. The feeling of fighting and tearing the spider's pieces was almost amazing. It was so pure. But now it felt tinged with the shame and Wyam had no desire to invite more in. She wanted to rest, to sulk, if she was being honest. Mother was never in any danger. Never. Wyam would burn before she abandoned someone. She would never leave the loved one. Not like... Not like Wyam had been? Hmm, odd. That was a new feeling. Loathing. Wyam closed her eyes, feeling the war between the door rage on. She felt, for the first time, trapped and helpless. Wyam loathed it. End of chapter. There's no epic lucha, only puns. Chapter 80. Mother vs. Mother. The thick, sickly purple haze was still seeping in, despite New's best efforts. Delta hovered over the circus room with uncertainty. The spider manor ducked in one way, but split in the last second, gaining around New as it stuck as one being. He used of fake information boxes and putting on Delta's manor had only worked for so long. The deeper hunger and excitement that infected the spider manor grew eager, as New slipped up at a crucial moment. The purple manor was about to reach into the room of the second floor, and who knew what it would do for the queen? The flow of the spiders was slow, but if she got closer to Delta's core, she might start being able to do some real nasty things with existing spiders, or making something worse. Wilhelm growled as he limped out of the room, a corpse of the titan spider left behind. The giant silver ape's body was covered in countless bite marks and holes with sharp legs and pierced his beautiful fur, staining it red. The ape was deeply injured and Delta could only hide him to retreat. The rush of the queen's manor washed over Nguyen began to fritz and smoke. No! Delta cried and dove without hesitation towards him. Let him go, you monster, she demanded. Oddly, the purple haze was startled, and something Delta hadn't noticed before rushed forward. Passive orange motes of light that had been either moved by new or devoured by the queen suddenly roared to action, crashing hard against the queen. The smell of burning mushrooms and nature smashed against the feeling of mad hunger. The dungeon around Delta seemed to be suddenly break like a fragile piece of stained glass. The image she was used to. 
Creation filtered through pieces of colored glass and angles, was stripped away as the universe laid before her. Her dungeon stretched to infinite possibilities and space. How small Delta was so far. The scene she saw was like a shimmering mass of mana. There was nothing physical here. Nothing quite real or fake. This was a chessboard of another kind. A view from just the two queens. The two mothers. Delta at one end of the system and existence, the queen on the other. Her core was at a star of the constant churning sea of colors. Her star blazed orange and in the same galaxy. The same solar system was a glowing mass of ugly black holes and eyes. From her sun rotated two planets, one a deep green orb of pride, too distant to cut the growing cancer on Delta's existence, the other a brown planet with green seas. It guarded her sun with bristled fury. Volcanoes exploded and her surface continuously shook, and the visage of Wyme was exposed to Delta's eyes. Delta was unbound to walls, floors, and rocks. Her existence, her creation, her very meaning blazed around the sea of mana and purpose. Her monsters, all of them, floated around her boss monster like flickering moons or soaring comets, ready to defend her to their end. Delta felt oddly calm as she watched the growing cancer. The Spider Queen swing her sickly black swarms of slime, Easily, she flicked the desire of the solar flare, and the light easily repelled it. She thought of only one thing, to defend her worlds, to defend her systems, to defeat this invader. She screamed in challenge as some primal part of her demanded action. Inside her sun, the number four glowed in a deep red warning to the approaching queen. Nu felt oddly displaced as Delta's warm light suddenly drove into the Spider Queen's manor and his worry faded. Delta just merged with the very dungeon air and walls and water. Delta and dungeon were one and Nu couldn't even find a way to contact her mind. At the same time, the Spider Queen had also stopped advancing. Nu watched with fascination at the very base of all the dungeon's existence. The manor began to attack the purple manor. Like an immune system response, that had turned on Delta's sudden offense. He felt the dungeon shake as he spun to float outside. At his failure to stop the queen, she had evolved another damned titan spider. Unlike people, monsters did not lock him out, nor did it seem that the dungeon prevented invading monsters from upgrading themselves in response. The looming forces was doing its best to ram down the suddenly sealed stone doors to Wyam's chamber. The few bees that Davina seemed to be trying to take it down, but it wasn't enough. Without Delta's awareness, her monsters seemed to be struggling to deal with the sudden absence of their mother, worry clouding their actions as they tried to win the physical battle of the dungeon. This would not do. Sis, I need higher control to handle the forces. He pinged the system, but the feminine voice was usually cheery, came back with a snap. Authority is not to be managed right now. I'm preventing corruption. Delta. Delta. Delta is... Oh. Sis faltered as for the first time she seemed to fully analyze the situation. Delta is being a damn good dungeon call right now, so stop wasting precious nanoseconds and give me damn control modulation. New snap back. There was a pause. Be careful. Last time you went nuts. She warned. There was a feeling of influx manner and news box. His lovely box grew legs. Damn it. The torso formed next to the arms, the eyes, and the damn fur curled hair. He floated here, and the midnight blue human male. Ugh. Delta must have soaked too deeply into the authority seat to allow anything but a human shape at this point. He flexed his fingers and what seemed like an empty space between orange motes of manner. Midnight blue ones popped into existence. Attention, you idiotic overgrown children. Delta is busy and I will not tolerate her coming back to see you all dead, or worse, making me look bad. Now get your minds into the fight and destroy the Titan Spider before I figure out that this body can have a damn brain aneurysm. New growled over the floor. There was a precious second of pause before the army of bees began to swarm the spider. Rail and Luna weren't far behind. He felt Bob dragging a fair amount of spiders into the water, his fear now gone, replaced by determination. 
even the little damn crabs snipping off the legs where they could. That was more how New liked it. Delta watched as the sun seemed to grow a shadow, demonically a blue and cold star that sat conjoined with her own blazing sun, tiny but visible. The star didn't scare Delta, in fact, she even better with it around. Trickery, Valcor. Change your color all you like, you'll be mine. The black mass promised gleefully. Voices, words, Delta actually found them a little distasteful in the state. Were her intent and emotions not visible? Did it have to resort to such thing as taunting? Could it not display the most simple of expressions with her feelings? This queen was really beginning to irk her. Fine, let's talk. You should go home and stop killing your kids and seal the tunnel. I'm being very nice right now, but I won't tolerate you killing my children. Delta called out. Tendrils of solar flares arched with her voice, creating vibrant waves of force. The black mass laughed. Children, they are drones to an end. My real children will be born when I use your heart as a nest. My domain will eclipse your dungeon, and together they will form an abyss. The howl came back, and the black mass was actually beginning to take form. Her torso and rough head formed first, and the queen was slowly becoming more concrete with her image. Delta felt a pulse of rage hit her. Her sun blazed hot and red. Drones, they're dying for you. They love you, Delta yelled. The feeling of fanatical devotion of the spires fought only too clear. The universe around them grew colder as the queen merely looked bored. Yes, she had her eight eyes now. Love, how pointless. There is only power, and they fear my power. It is their world. I peered into your realm. Sickly webs you spin with love and promises. Your children will die knowing that they have failed them in the moment of death. A sweet soup that I will drink. The queen mocked. You are a monster. Delta whispered, the queen brushing long silvery hair out of her cold face. A crown of spindly legs formed around her head, a crook of regal black covering her new body. No more than you. We are both mothers of monsters. You merely lie to yourself. Pity. Sad. Came the response as she lashed out countless more dark waves of spiders, each ready to die for their ma- their creator. Delta only stared at the cold, cruel brutality of the being before her. Her planet seemed to slow, the comets, the moons, seemed to pause to wait for Delta's response. Her planets, her rocks, her children, her friends, her family, her home. Just lay down and die to the superior mother. The queen laughed into the darkness of the universe. Delta looked up and held up one finger. First off. She stated with a burning pillar of flame exploding from the sun in waves that burned her to a crisp. The queen looked startled. You are no mother. If that was a child protective services on this planet, I'd have them here so fast I would cause a rip in the space-time continuum, then shove you into the rip with pleasure. She walked forward, and behind her, the sun began to expand as the planets, comets, moons, fled inside taking shelter and becoming covered in her protection. The blue sun began to orbit like a moon around her own. How? No, you are not this powerful, the queen choked. Delta held up a second finger, and the sun began to consume all its path as it expanded more. Second off, you are such a cliché of a horrid villain that I am actually ashamed that you came to my dungeon. You are boring, uninteresting, and have no depth beyond, Ooh, I am so evil. Please, I do not have time to waste with such a one-act pony spider. Delta announced the queen began to spin, trying to spread out the wall of darkness to appear bigger, but she had retreated. Delta kept walking forward. Enough! I will not be mocked by such a failure of a dungeon. The queen rushed forward, and Delta sniffed once and backhanded the wave of her fire, burning the cloaks of darkness in the crown that had been forming on the spider woman. The queen looked shocked as she touched her orange-strained cheek. Delta held up three fingers. Third off, I'm actually a good parent despite the fact that my kids scared the willies out of me, in more ways than one. And you're right, I am a terrible dungeon. But guess what? I do not give one ounce of a fricks about your opinion and your thoughts. I will not take advice from someone who chose to be a queen instead of a damned mother. 
Now, I have a little thing here where I have no idea what I'm doing, so I really suggest scampering off before my self behind me explodes. Delta jerked her thumb over her shoulder to the sun on the verge of supernova. The queen went white, then pink, then red. I will eat you. She spat and lunged forward. Delta's fist caught her on the nose, spreading mere orange. Delta eyed the spider queen for a long moment as she focused. You know, that's not a bad idea. But eating talking people isn't my forte, so I'll just scoop up what is left after. I promise, I'm not usually so cruel or mean, but you really do know how to push my buttons. And sadly, one of those buttons has a giant label called Supernova. Hopefully, enough of you will remain behind that I can help your kids. Delta said or coldly. She vanished. The queen held her nose up in pain. She looked up as her skin began to grow warm, and then it became hot. She looked up the stun of orange engulfed the blue one, and she kept growing, and growing, consuming, eating. She screamed, You promised me power and life! Help me! She cried to the fading darkness. No one answered. No more promises. She had been left to fade after her failure. She sat there on her knees as the orange swallowed her whole. Inside the sun, the monster far worse than she could ever have imagined opened wide and devoured her. Every one of the spiders just died. New blinked and shocked as one by one all, all curled up and they were being withered from the inside. The manna inside filled the air, but it looked lost, less purple and more clear. Without intent or ownership, New turned to the deep orange light exploding out of the core. Rushing past Wyam, Past knew, and he felt, Not a mother pain, sorrow must be done, had to no choice that I helped him do something. Like his head had been filled to its limits before it faded. Delta's light fired up the spider tunnel, and as she did so, there came a deep scream as the purple manor was set alight. A burning sea of stars to the human eye. Delta's power flooded all the way to the outside world. He could only imagine the sight. It's Delta, she's really nice. Dio promised Kemi as a pillar of orange light exploded into the sky from deep forest beyond Durance. The priestess had met the young teen, and she had been unable to say no as his offer of a tour. She guessed that he didn't talk to outsiders much. Well, yell at them. Why is she exploding? Kemi yelled in panic. Dio thought about it. Maybe she had gas, he suggested. Kemi eyed him and felt no deception coming from the boy. He was like the chosen of her goddess. Lies had never touched his body. She was about to comment when something landed on her shoulder. She looked around to see half a spider staring blankly at her. Her heart dropped and Dio opened his mouth wide in surprise. It's raining spiders! I've never done that before! Cheese, swords, and one time it rained! Fire, but never spiders! He said with excitement. Kemi felt faint as legs, bodies, and gore rained down on the village. She felt a shadow overhead and saw the cherry woman, Mrs. Damagost holding an umbrella out for her. You came at an interesting time, the woman smiled sweetly, her eyes turning to the fading jet of orange light. Never seen a dungeon blow up a domain like this, but Delta was never subtle. I really liked that about her, the woman chortled as she went about scooping up pots into a bucket. Fresh fertilizer, she said with glee. This is... isn't normal. Kemi squeaked in protest, watching Dio try to assemble a spider from random bits and pieces still falling around them. Wonderful, isn't it? Mrs. Damagast laughed. This village was mad. The dungeon was scary. Kemi whimpered, but Dio's innocent look, she half-heartedly pointed out a leg that he could use in the distance. The boy's smile was like the sun, amidst the storm of spider limbs. Kemi and her friends needed to hurry and beat Delta's dungeon before they became just as mad. That was the honest truth as Kemi had never believed it to be. Delta broke the surface. She inhaled as she sat up on the front of her core. Someone was slapping her. At first she thought it was a spider queen had been even stronger than she'd imagined, but she blinked bleary-eyed at a blue boy. He was scowling fiercely at her. Idiot! What kind of fool jumps into an inter-soul battle with an unknown foe? I have no idea what you even did, the boy complained, and he shook her slightly. It was kind of cute. He tussled hair and purple cheeks, showing his frustration. 
He was glaring at her, but Dalta still felt so happy to be back that she smiled stupidly at him. You're blue, she beamed. No, you don't. I'm new, the boy argued. New what? Dalta said confused as she tried to stand it up, but something wasn't quite working. She stared down to see that she had no legs. Her body was still forming slowly out of the floor. You're slowly retaking command, hence why my legs are going, the boy pointed out. Dalta looked down with a frown to see the boy's own legs were almost ghostly, invisible. Thank goodness, I can go back to the perfect shape and be rid of these damned limbs. The boy shook said limbs with frustration. Those words, those manner. No, she said slowly. The young man, a little younger than Dalta, looked up. Glad you can see my greatness in any form, but how are you? He asked cautiously. Dalta tried to remember the space, the stars, the queen. What happened? Why do you have non-boxy features? Did you know that you have dimples? Dalta pointed out the dimples that showed when new glowered. Of course, that's what you focus on. You blew up the queen, the spiders all died, and now Sis and I are trying to hold off the giant wave of mana from basically overloading your core. You also snagged a lot of things from the spider queen. Her tunnel is, well, it's odd, to say the least. New reported, his torso began to fade as Delta pulled herself free from the floor slightly more. I didn't blow her up for fun. I punched her first and slapped her, but she kept coming. Then I blew up, Dalton tried to remember. New shook his head. Stars and spider explosions. You don't settle for low, do you? Our folks all survived. But Wilhelm, he's come to the poison over time, but his recharge time is already counting down. So it was a total victory for us. Hurrah! New said Demphand. Dalton eyed him. Actually, why do you have a body? She asked, and then suddenly the dungeon shook. Delta gasped as the stars exploded across her vision. Her blood felt thick, her muscles expanded, her mind was drawn in white lights. New gave a pained gasp as he held two hands out. The feeling of drowning halted for a moment. Not a good time to talk. The manor is coming. The frogs are throwing what they can into the tunnel, but there's so many. Plus two titan spiders. New trailed off, Delta's head began to spin. To two? She asked in shock and horror, but the manor began to press again. She shook the question off. What can we do? I can't. I don't think I can handle that again, she said in a panic. New's body seemed to be pushed forward by the mass of white manor gathering behind him. The third floor, it's our only chance. If you can purchase it once, I begin to leak the manor. Sis can knock you out, and I'll drain enough manor on the stupid crap you'll love, and then we get back together, and everything can go back to normal. New yelled, and his effort began to cause pain to shoot across the features of his face. I can't leave you to deal with this alone, she tried to argue, but New's deep blue eyes darker than the rest of him met hers. I'm just a menu, nothing special. You are a core, we need you intact, he panted. Delta reached out, and not expecting it, she grabbed New's hand. He stared for a moment, and the tendrils of white manner began to float past. Delta couldn't move, New's hand was warm. He was real. To Dalta, New was real. You're special to me. Don't ever forget it. Dalta is not good without her New, she explained, in her haze of bloated manner collected in the pit of her stomach. The fading face of New suddenly smirked. I know. Honestly, you'd be a wreck without me. But just listen to me. Just this once. He said, his voice turning gentle. I'll be fine. Trust me, hmm? He pushed, and a small smile playing around his lips. Delta felt his warm hand becoming fainter and fainter. Uh, Okay, but if I wake up and you're gone or injured, I'll explode my son and you so hard that you'll have to come back. She warned him seriously. New blinked. Explode your... Son, no, no time. Are you ready? Do you have the menu open and ready? He shouted, startling Delta into action. Third floor, D100DP. Ready, she promised. New hesitated for seconds. You really are a good call. A friend, even, he mumbled, and the white mass slipped past before Delta could even think of a response. It was like she was swallowed by an ocean. It just kept coming and coming, bitter and cold. She gulped, and it felt like she couldn't push forward to reach the purchase button. 
The waves of men and deep he owned for the fight overwhelmed her and almost promised to push her so far down into the darkness that she would never come back. She fought, she screamed, and she crawled forward towards the only color. The fading blue smile of knowing, knowing that Delta was going to be just fine. That was just enough to make the last few inches possible. The knowledge that she had people waiting for her. She had spiders to fix a tunnel to look at. Dear Lord, what if adventures came? She would never live down the state that she was in. Her finger smashed the screen as her body threatened to pop with the sheer resources gathering in her tight frame. The message was clear. Third floor purchased. Thank you for your purchase. Sleep well, Delta. Don't let it be dragons on the third floor, please, she mumbled, and sweet warm orange overtook her senses as everything began to shake. New was flung out of the core room as the dungeon shook and shuddered. Space and dimension shifted wildly to connect the second floor to this new space. New wasn't sure what was going on, but the space felt different than the first and second floor. Delta was clearly absorbed back into the core and his human form slingered. He was confused why until Sis appeared with information. Acting core, please choose a theme for the area. Lava, ocean, mountain. Sis began to flicker badly and New went to grab her. Error. Repurposed area. Theme selected. Please pass one of my apologies. Unstable energies detected. Floor 3 is invading sealed space. Theme. The silent fortress. The main foes determined. Undead. New monster granted to the core for the third floor. Trolls unlocked. Factions of third floor cannot make new rooms. Space is predetermined and allocated. Defeat the enemies to take over the rooms. Boss room in use. Defeat the boss. New pursed his lips. This was Delta's fault somehow. If not, it was just her damned luck. Behind the core, stars formed. Cold stone things had radiated darkness and the feeling of disturbing something alien. There was when the truly strangest thing of all happened in New short experience. A lizard-like creature sprinted up the stairs, looking around in a crazed amazement. A dungeon! Excellent! Come, come! No time to waste. The thing almost sang. From behind him came the sounds of rattling and clacking. The lizard turned to a slow, crazed smile. Not today, you spooky bastards! He howled and hurled a glowing red orb down the stairs. A wave of fire and heat roared over the stairs and stained the stone black with soot. The lizard creature, Acre Bold, turned to shake its head. They're all back, he told the room. New tried to speak, but his voice just faded. The cobalt sniffed around Delta's core room with a long, interested sniff. He began to juggle his damn grenades and looked thoughtful as he made all the orbs just vanish down his sleeves. The name is Jack, he said, tasting the words as if not one had been asked of his name for a long time. I've been down there for about uh, 40 years, no, 30, uh, 50? Ah, who cares, but thank God you came, you beautiful thing. Jack hugged Delta's core, causing New to growl and used the last of his strength to send an order. The doors opened to the core. The group of Rail, Davina, Rennie, Luna, Giant, and Gramps made the Cobalt pause. Instead of looking worried, the damn thing looked even more overjoyed. Yes, best day ever since I learned how to creep moss into edible food, he yelled. He gained the mad glint in his eyes. So it is time to settle the score, he grinned. New stared for a long moment. He looked to see the manor gathering in the call room the dent used to buy the third floor still filling up much slower. Delta, hurry back, I don't want to deal with this, he whispered, almost begging, as Luna kicked the damn cobalt back down the stairs in surprise. New wanted a nice water level, with mecha and sharks and sword-wielding octopi. Was it too much to ask for? End of chapter. There is no epic lucha, only puns. Chapter 81. Long may she reign. Haldi was soon joined by Pick and Mila. The area around the dungeon was experiencing a rushing waves of manner as it grew its third floor. Must be a record, Pick mused, as he rolled his silver teeth for a moment. The manor rushed past and the barren lands drank it up even more than during the previous manor waves. The third floor was special like that. Floors of three seemed to generate a special intense magical vibe. Mila inhaled and her eyes were slanted. Humanity remained in control, but it was clear that they were all indulging on the vibes. 
pig's teeth were creating small sparks on the ground with them. Haldi was running a small ball of cheese over his fingers. The compact brie could be anything, so he desired it at that moment. He was remembering some of the things that he had perfected over the years. Cheese whip. A misleading or shot in battle. Claw cheddar was amusing, but left the nails smiling for days. Haldi winced as he suddenly remembered his Hammerson lance. He consoled himself with the fact that he had been doing things through a phase. Haldi formed a tiny cheese butterflies and it floated gently to the tip of his fingers. The dungeon reached the first fort. Freck me, I forgot how it felt. Mila growled as she leaned on her bow. Pick shot her an amused look. Wasn't that the idea? But yeah, nothing like that feeling to bring back bad memories. He agreed after a moment. They stood at the gate of behind them, another layer of durance awoke. The hidden and the slumbering paws that would only awaken when things would pick up. The few odd spots, pages, bookstore, the inn, the few select others had never been reduced to the others had. And now the more extreme elements were beginning to break free from the grey. I wonder if Sir Gloric Dawnbringer is going to join us for a drink soon. Haldi said brightly, Pick grinned and Mila went pale. If there's any mercy left in this world, I would have hoped they're both blind and deaf before he came around. She grimaced. Sir Gloric was a tad bit, uh, bright. He was a knight of the sun god. Those fellows tended to be cheery at the worst of times. Pick rubbed his chin. I should introduce him to grow more to him. The boy could use a positive influence in his life, besides that Dio lad. I dare say that Dio and Gloric would get along quite grandly. The man agreed. Mila looked at Pick as if he just stabbed her. Introducing them, I will hunt you down, she warned. Haldi had a glad to see that her friends returning second by second, the people that they had slipped back in. Even now, he could almost feel Durance beside them, getting fired up about challenging the sunlight to a duel. Gods, he missed Dior. Still, it wasn't all cheese and rainbows. Could mean Thomas Darkblade might actually come out of his basement from hunting diorats. He said and his mood dropped. I thought we buried him. Pick whispered aghast. Mila frowned. No, I think we just told him that there was a secret boss if he killed a hundred rats in his basement. Only released ninety-nine, so he never came out as the grey got to him. Frick. He might come out of his basement. She cursed louder and louder. Haldi turned to see the town that they had built. Well, it was just his imagination. Or did the flowers bloom faster? Were the birds singing almost jolly tunes? Was Durance experiencing life for the first time proper? What would happen to the children, the newcomers that had come to fade? Haldi shivered as the shaking in the ground went crazy and the manor peaked. Mina opened her mouth and a rear at the giant spider landed on her, cutting her off as it crashed loudly crushing Mina under it. Pick and Haldi shared a look, both doing their best not to smile as the corpse began to shake violently. You have something in your hair. Pick pointed to the giant spider. Well, not even giant, covered this beast. Titan? Colossus? Mina lifted the thing with one hand's ichor, running down her usually clean features. The mix of blood and venom having no effect on Mina, as she had been eating things far more exotic for fun for her youth. Could have left your horrid sense of humor in the gray, she snapped, and then threw the spider to the side. But the gray doesn't appreciate me like you do, Pick said with mock flattery. He eyed the spider. Haven't seen them this big since that time Haldi left his cheese packets open when he camped near Thornton. I swear, I was still asleep when you all cut me free from the cocoon. Barely felt anything, he chuckled. I remember someone screaming. Haldi disagreed and Mila just smoked. This was good. Haldi breathed, and every moment, he noticed how much he'd missed his friends. They all let their smiles fade as they turned to the dungeon. What's the plan, Pick said, voice gruff as he turned to business. Mila flicked goo off of her bow and said slowly, Let's see what Delta can do. She's a dungeon and might be able to mount countermeasures we can't. The first three fourths are jokes now unless they're all new tricks, and it's the church that we want. Mina said bluntly, she might struggle. It would be wise if we help her, Haldi frowned. Pick and Mila shot him a look. 
We go in there, then our brains get picked clean, and it remembers even faster. It can cover the weaknesses we abused. We go in, then the church goes from nearly impossible to we might as well just shoot ourselves. We cannot go into the dungeon until the last moment. Mila said clearly as she could to make herself heard. How the eye the blue skies above. So what good are we? He sighed, already knowing the answer. We gathered powerful people, those who know nothing but are eager for a true fight. They could have kicked our collective rears thirty years ago. If worse comes to worse, we have an army sitting on the doorstep. Best case, we have the powerful resources to train nature's strongest cleaning machine to treat the sore on the world. Mila turned, walking back into the village. We did everything to make sure the dungeon would come. Anything after that is up to little mists in the dungeon. We can only wait and see, eh? Pick smiled, showing his powerful teeth. Holdy remembered that. I just want to show that we can still help, he complained as he walked with his friend's hand behind his back. Make sure the new blood aren't agents and drop some cheese chimeras from the dungeons to abuse. Pick suggested and Holdy did his best to impression of Mila, knowing the woman could hear him. Directing the dungeon's growth is against the rules of the kingdom. I can't be asked with the paperwork, he said with a mock growl. This got the laugh out of Pick and Haldi grinned until Mila turned and stalked towards him. He threw his cheese butterfly at her and ran. He felt more than saw Mila catching the poor butterfly and chewing it as she chased him. Now he really missed Durance. The man would be good meat shield at this point. Delta dreamed of children laughing. Three boys and three girls. They were playing tag. Above them, a matronly woman smiled as they played. Delta looked at each of the children glowed in a different color. Red, blue, green, gold, silver, and orange. Delta half expected to see herself as a little girl, but the girl looked nothing like her. Pigtails with oversized teeth and a nose that wasn't hers. Well, if nothing else, the woman had a Power Ranger team being handed to her on a plate. Again? I want to hear it again. The green girl shouted. The woman smiled and opened a storybook. Once upon a time, there were two siblings. They were all that was, is, and would be. They enjoyed their life together. Then one day, they wanted to play a game of hide-and-seek, but neither of them wanted to close their eyes. So, together they made a person. It would close its eyes. The woman read, Delta shrugged, and sat down. None of them were looking at her. She guessed it was one of those weird, important dreams with a twist. She might as well enjoy the story. To make sure that it didn't cheat, the brothers took a left eye and he ran to the left. However, he didn't know that his sister had done the same idea and took its right eye. The person was blind, and when it came to life, he could only see the darkness instead of the light of the brother and sister enjoyed. The woman read on. Delta blinked. Okay, she guessed this was the grim version of things. Should have taken the ears and tongue too, the boy cried. Delta scooted away from him. The blue boy spoke up. Maybe they should have eaten the eyeballs. I bet they never had those before, he mused. Delta was running out of scooting directions as she neared the gold girl with a wrinkled her face. Oh, burning them as a gift to each other's is much easier. The girl argued. Delta wondered if she was in a psych ward with spooky dreams. The, 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 they should have given the eyes back, the orange girl sniffed, upset by the story. The silver boy held her hand. They should have trusted it to not cheat, he told her. This made the orange girl smile a little through her tears. The person cried, and from his empty eyes came the first shadows of pain. The person cried for his eyes, and the children ran in fear, still holding its eyes. The person wondered the plane, spreading his tears and tainted the ground. The children created a lake to keep it away, and it turned to the lake black as it swam. They created a forest to hide in, and the trees became scary as the shadows embedded the trees. They created mountains, but the person climbed after them. The woman read without responding to the children. People are scary, the gold girl said quietly. In a last ditch effort, the sister jumped into the sky with a boost from her brother. The blonde hair became sunrise and the sun itself, but the brother could not reach the same height and fell as he tried to jump. His body crashed and became the earth, his bones the pillars of the world, his blood soaked down to the form of the hot magma. 
the eye that the sister held from her grasp and became the moon, the eye the brother had fell into the earth and formed the source of all manner. The matron read calmly. Delta wanted off of this train. Any time now. One by one, each of the children began to complete the story in a creepy unison. When the person broke down, as he cried, he saw out. It leaked out, and his eyes and broke into millions of tiny people. The empty husk of the person had no eyes, no soul, and no name. The person fell into nothing as it had nothing. It fell into the world of silence, they said. The matron had stopped moving. Delta stood and was trying to back away as one by one. The children turned to look at her. All of them. All of them had no eyes. It just wanted its eyes back, and it would make sure that it finally find its brother and sister. They chanted, and when it does, the world would turn back to where it should be. At a silence, they all accept the screams of those siblings. That would be lovely. Wouldn't it, Delta? The children asked with smiles. Delta ran. She ran and ran and ran. She ran so hard that she literally ran screaming out of the call and panicked noises, causing Nu back in his box form to scream as well. It took her a moment to recognize the dusting of the dream and sleep falling away. New scream made Rayel yelp and Luna screech. The lizard thing that she had never seen before looked around, shrugged, and then joined in by shrieking at the top of his lungs with abject terror. After a few seconds, there was a silence before the lizard thing sighed in contentment. A good scream does wonders for a broken mind. Shall we do it again? Just to make sure that you're real and I haven't gone madder, then a goblin and an NSAP, he suggested. Hello? Delta said slowly, and the creature paused and he squinted in her general direction. Oh, that's one sumpsardic man. I like it. No judgment here. After years of rattle, rattle, and infernal uh, pain and torment noises, everyone really does sound wonderful. The lizard nodded. He was about a head shorter than numb. He wore a raggedy kilt, but his chest carried a series of glowing orbs on thin leather straps that looked dangerous to even glance at. Let alone carry. Scars, burn marks, web work, and green veins, and crazed eyes made the fellow look charming, if somewhat likely to kill them all in their sleep. At the side was crinkling bottles made from what seemed like glass and bone. Inside bubble chemicals and things? Things? Delta had no name for. Name's Jack, not my real name. Forget that a long time ago. I go with Jack because I can be a jack off. A jack of all trades, a jackass, and a jack without a jewel. A jack in the box, a carter jacker. Well, you get the idea. The lizard held out a claw to shake. Delta, completely confused, tried to shake it. To her surprise, her hand made light contact for a second before her hand broke apart into a cloudy orange mist. Mama, you look pretty solid. Luna praised. Delta spun, still utterly lost to what happened. New? Help? There's a lizard man in my dungeon. I feel... Delta touched her cheeks as if unsure. Why do I feel like I gained ten pounds? She demanded. Her mind stretched wide as she felt all over her dungeon. The most important feature was the stairs behind her core. The stairs to a third floor. She spun and froze. Instead of excitement and anticipation that she'd expected, she felt fear when she looked at those cold stone steps. She couldn't sense anything at the bottom, as if her powers had been rebuffed or rejected from the space. Jack is from the floor below. The third floor has been connected to an existing space, in which Sis couldn't install a theme and had to submit to the current theme. Newsbox explained, and that's when Delta suddenly remembered something. You had dimples and messy hair, she accused. Newsbox went blank, as Luna shared a look with Rail. What's dimples? she asked blankly. Rail poked her cheeks with a bright grin. These. New had human shape, and Delta thinks she would be quite dashing. He announced. Jack looked at New. Was gonna ask about that, but I didn't want to seem ignorant of the human box hybrid species, so I kept quiet, he said. It's a dungeon, things. It doesn't matter, Delta. We have to invade the next floor to get anywhere. New flustered words made Delta frown. But that's like tyrant and evil stuff. The people down there might be pretty settled and peaceful. She argued without pausing. There came a howl of bones and stone and screeching of ghosts that cast eerie shadows. 
Jack chucked a green orb over his shoulder and it bounced down the stairs before the stairs belched a green sickly fire. There was a beat of silence. Okay, not peaceful, but maybe we should at least get information to act on, Delta debated feebly. That would be great, but I've been trying for years. Here's the jiggy of the jig. Place is overrun with dead. Every time I blow something up, a few hours later it rises again. Jack began. Delta thought the more that she looked at him, the more he looked like a cute Genko. Maybe she could keep him? No, she had no focus. Sounds like a dungeon, Luna mused. Jack waved that off. Nah, just boring necromancy gone supernova. There's a priest of the silence way back in one of those rooms. I can't ever get to him or her, he said quickly, remembering Luna and Delta. Delta felt cold. Silent, she echoed. Jack itched his snout. I think I remember. Maybe I made it up. But there are some nutters that like the silent one a lot. Like a lot, a lot. They kind of died for him. Still do. Jack said brightly as he suddenly looked proud. Silent one, some boogeyman of the oldest creation myths, Luna said bored. Delta turned to stare at her. Wyme told me a bunch of stories. She defended quickly. The idea that the tree telling anyone anything that didn't involve death and blood was odd, but considering her gene, yeah, Wyme might like that story very well. So super religious nuts, Rail summed up. Jack raised one claw. With an undead army, he added. Most religious nuts have brain-dead followers. Dalton muttered, Kemi's religion seemed nice. She could exercise thinking and willpower, and it didn't seem to harm anyone. So how do I expand? Delta asked the question so that she had been avoiding. Rail and Luna puffed the chests out. I, the mighty Rail, shall assemble a squad and aid Jack in taking over the first room and give you time to take control and improve it. Rail grinned and he planted his trident on the ground. You can go down there, Delta was surprised. Evidently, Sis might have had to accept a connection, but the girl is clever. She was able to make the whole place into some pseudo-dungeon space. Our monsters won't be able to be at full strength, but they can go down there. Plus, once we get the first room, you can make your new monsters. Delta blinked for a long moment. She silently opened her menu and stared at the new entry. I've been trolled, she said aghast. Trolls? Could be useful. Not clever, but pretty good at smashing things. Jack said cheerfully. Delta shot him a look. This is all too much, too fast. First off, how the heck did you get down there? How did you survive? She said, voice filled with utter dismay at the idea of being trapped, like Rennie. Another victim of these silent jerks. Jack defeated for a moment. That's a long, tragic backstory that I don't remember and will make up on the spot with lies to make myself look better. Do you want to hear it? He asked somebody, Delta almost said yes. Almost. Maybe later. Knew what happened to the spider tunnel. She gave it an official title along with a question. Odd, you exploded the spider queen and well, it's not quite. New struggled to explain, so Delta just looked at the tunnel herself. And sure enough, she also struggled to quite explain what she was seeing. The crude tunnel had been superheated and twisted like the inside of a drill. Bright, glowing streaks of orange and dim purple encircling each other for a fair distance until Delta came to a dead end, where the white barrier prevented her from seeing the outside of the tunnel. The eye-catching feature being the giant glowing orange egg nestled in the ceiling inside. A tiny form was seen in the egg pulsed with mana. This thing drained most of the excess mana on the third floor, didn't. I think it's the Spider Queen, but clearly you did something again. The accusing tone made Delta smile slightly. I might have blown her up a little. She admitted before turning to peer at the egg. So, is it a contract, or is it like an epic monster, she guessed. Sis believes that you did something so utterly you. You gained an ability not often seen at a dungeons below the triple-digit floors. Not many dungeons have multiple entrances. I think Sis said that only one or two have more than two. She believes that you turned the leftover Spider Queen bits into, well, a guardian. Something that defends the entrance, but if you beat it, you can skip entire floors. This creature should defend the giant hole that you made in the forest. Congratulations! 
It's a spider. Delta paused. It wasn't my fault, she said quickly. Don't give me that tone. You are a walking disaster. Ah, uh, but new, no, I make it look good on purpose. She winked, and she eyed the glowing egg for a long moment, but it didn't look anywhere near ready to hatch. Hurry up, Queenie, you got some karma to work off. She urged and the egg pulsed just a little brighter. She turned to face the stairs. She had an adventuring party to make. Delta was pretty sure dungeons were not meant to be making the adventures, but instead waiting for them. Delta shrugged to herself. She never stopped to be a proper dungeon before. Why start now? End of chapter. That, my friends, concludes this episode. I hope that you enjoyed. If you wish to support the author of the story, there will be a link below. If you wish to support this channel, there are multiple ways to do so, which will all also be linked below. But the easiest way would be to subscribe and share my videos as much as possible. And until next time, I hope you all have a good one. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.